Hello and welcome to the Zoom Room. It's Glorious Goodwood. It is the Friday and we have five mounds for Sylvester D'Souza, our star sports ambassador, uh, who also featured in, in the Irish Sun today alongside me on the same page. So keeping great company there, Sil. And you're actually, your Irish accent seems to get stronger every time it talks to you on a, <laughs> by virtue of your wife. Yeah, is your wife been telling me off, you know, all the time. So <laughs> every, every time I talk I to him now, Bill, right. he says everything is grand. <laughs> How are you, Bill? Talking Irish swear words, Bill. I've heard them. Uh, I'm good. All good. I had a few days at Goodwood, so yeah, all good. Uh, how did your horse run yesterday? Uh, he got stuck in the mud on Tuesday, sadly. Um, but he'll be back. He'll be back for more when the ground dries out. It was a very difficult decision. To I'm make. here. Can I book? Yeah, so yeah. Bill's ready, <laughs> ready for the ride on fast ground. <laughs> fast ground. Yeah. It is yeah. truly extraordinary, though, that you get like a sex, effectively a heat wave, and then you get this. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if good would have been the week before, it would have been good to firm. Mm. If, 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 but um, look, he 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 went off favourite for a Goodwood race. It's great to have had a runner, but um, they're still looking for him. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I think that, you know, the joy of having a horse like that at a festival like that, kind of with a big crowd as well. And in terms of the crowd as well, i got to mention a couple of things in terms of star sports. Pipped at the post, so we'll uh, return your stake to uh, a pony if, if you're beating a neck or less. But also, I've been reliably informed by Luke Tarr, who has had internet problems, actually, couldn't do this. He tells me to go along to the star sports uh, pitches, say hello to the lads. And he even said, Bill, they look after you, whatever that means. Yeah, it sounds a bit ominous, that, doesn't it? It, it does, it does. But to be <laughs> fair, like, what's it been like, Bill, actually? Because, you know, we don't really have it yet. We have a thousand at Galway. What's it been like in Goodwood? Yeah, it, it feels back to normal. There's a really good atmosphere. I mean, when, when Alcohol Free won, there was a great atmosphere. You know, it's 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 glimmers of normality. You know, this this COVID thing changed the world and, and you know, everyone's fighting back. You know, whether that lasts or how long it lasts for. I don't know, but Sil will tell you it's great to have an atmosphere back on the race course. Yeah, I, I presume you will, Sil. Yes, absolutely. You know, today when the row of the crowd was unbelievable. Like, you know, feels like it was my first time here, and, you know, when Alcohol Free won the, the race and, and it was unbelievable. Like, the crowd all got behind. It was, it was nice to see. Like, we, we have missing that for a while, and, you know, with the cover situation, and it just, you know, when we get back now, it feels like, we are more hungry for, for racing, you know. I completely agree. So what will the crowd be like in the 150? Let's get to the Friday. In the 150, which is the first race, a handicap, a staying handicap, which may or may not be run on soft ground. We'll talk about that as well. What will the crowd be like if Burry Ram, uh, who runs in the same colours as Cleante, does him on the line after you ride Cleante? That may not happen, but uh, you seem to have picked Cleante, who's a bigger price than Burry Ram, which is a very interesting point here. Yes, and... Uh... Well, Cleonte is a proven stayer, like, you know, mm. and, uh, you know, Borre around, he gone up in trip and it was trick for me to choose which yeah, one, sure. but they both carry low weight. So, and I choose for a quiet ride and, and for a better stayer, but uh, we're going to jump in front of the crowd. It would be amazing, you know. Yeah, and he does stay. He obviously beat Palisator going back in 2019. Um, he's only won one run race since, one run race since. But to be fair, his last run wasn't too bad. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No, it's a tough race. Like, it's competitive. But we're on the bottom one of the handicap, going over two and a half mile. It's, you know, it's a big ass when you carry top weight. But uh, it's, it, it, I think we got a chance because we carry low weight. But, you know, don't don't forget about the top horses carrying top weight, and that's why they carry top weight because they're better horses, you know. Bill, but uh, yeah, so go ahead, Bill. Sorry, yeah. And uh, you, you know, but it's a competitive race, and uh, it's a handicap over two and a half mile. But uh, you know, I think it will be hard to beat the top horse, but we have a go. Yeah, and and platform nineteen back from long absence win last time. Horse Mike, Michael Bell, who's in form trains. Uh, Bill, on this race and in general, what sort of ground roughly can we expect? Yeah, well, I mean. We, we, we're guessing with the weather, whether mm. it, first day that it, it, it's set fair, it's whether the rain showers hit on Friday morning. If they don't hit, it'll be nearly good ground. If they mm. do, we'll be back to the closer to softer ground. So there's lots of conundrums. This is a much better race than usual. There's a lot of quality in this race. And Silv's got a great record in, in here. We just touched off on it last year um, and, and had won it previously. Um I thought this was really hard. I, I mm. thought last year's one, two, three are the three to concentrate on for me. Um, Just Hubert won it last year, um, gets in for a pound lower mark. Um, he's around 14 to one. I thought that was just 
too big a price for just Hubert. So he would definitely be in my calculations. Um, and the other one was Smart Champion, who finished third in the race last year. Um, sneaks in right at the bottom, Smart Champion. Safi Osborne taking um, taking off a valuable five pounds. Was third in the race off 89 last year. Lines up off 83. Um, those two, kind of 12 to 1 Smart Champion and maybe 14 to 1 Just Hubert, I thought were the two for me. And, you know, I- I've deliberately left out Rochester House, my cliff horse. Yeah. He's free to go away and win now that I've I've left him out of the equation. Um, but no, I'll stick with Smart Champion and Just Hubert in the opener. Yeah, the Smart Champion, fascinating runner, Safi Osborne, good value for the five. Uh, still does not have a ride in uh, the bottom thoroughbred stakes. But just talking to you pre-show about this spade, Bill. You know, he's a three-year-old by Sea the Stars, and um, he's actually bred for at least a mile and a half. He's obviously been brought along slowly. And I'm wondering, uh, with a mark of 119, why we haven't seen more of him at a top level. But this is obviously slowly, slowly job because he's into a group three here as opposed to maybe the Sussex Stakes, which he could have run in. Yeah, Son of Cedar Stars and I'm raced at two, but won all three starts this year and got better and better with each 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 start. Even after the second start, when he beat um, Kamachi and Council, people were questioning whether he was just flattered by a seven and a half length victory. And then he went and ran in the listed race, the Sir Henry Cecil Stakes at the July meeting and beat really good horses. Horses with guineas for maximal, one ruler, um, ran them ragged, beat them by four lengths uh, in effortless style. He's heading to Group 1 company and he will likely take this en route. He's, they could have lined up in a race like the Sussex Stakes, but it's too early for him. This is the right race for Baid. And looking down these, it would be a major shock if, El Drama and Khartoum and Co. were good enough to beat him. Um, but the price will reflect it. He'll be nearer four to seven than he will evens, and I think he'll win. Yeah. What's what's the chat about this lad in the in the weighing room still? Because he's clearly not bred for a mile um, and he's improving at a rate of knots. He he really on pedigree should get a mile and six. Um, he's a he's a brother to a horse, got a mile and six, but he's obviously explosively good and could be really good. I think so, yeah, you know, his form tells him all, you know, and uh, probably they just take a time with the horse, but, uh, you know, the way he wins his race, he, you have to think he is the best horse in the race. Uh, let's get to Trey Flora, who was once trained in Ireland uh, by Ken Condon, and this is in the three o'clock. Um, just in, in terms of this horse, he, he's obviously still, he's he's kind of um, been a little bit ground versatile, but is it fair to say he would be one of the ones that wouldn't necessarily want the rain? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. No, you you got this spot on there. What do we got in the race? You think? Well, um, my my fell is a hold up horse, you know, mm. and uh, you know it doesn't matter to me. The 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 key in him is the ground probably going to be against to him, mm. and he got an improving horse out there called Horse Coming, and he could be a really dangerous there as well. Like you know, he he won in the track, so he's. You know, and he stays well. And uh, Dave O'Meara is, you know, is good to freshen up horses. And he just run the other day at Pontefract. He run a good second. And, uh, you know, I, I think he could be the really dangerous there. Yeah, and Pats of Thunder Bill comes here under a penalty after winning a new market. Uh, but that was on good to firm. Yeah, this is, this is, we often hear about, you know, the importance of the draw. I don't think there's a race in the kind of flat calendar that's more important draw-wise mm. in on these shores than this race and the low draw is very important there's a lot of trouble if you can find one coming out of a low draw who can hold a handy position you're in a very strong position um path of thunder he is the obvious one he's up eight pounds for his effortless win at the july meeting um got that low draw in trap three he's going to be well backed i can see him being a warm favorite um frankie and magical morning are drawn 11 life's a bit harder for them but i can see path of thunder being a proper gamble he, they always send one off short in this, and it'll be Path of Thunder. Uh, wide open contest, as you expect. I'm going to take a chance on two David Amara horses. I do respect Ross Collin, the leading fancy of his, um, but there are two I like here. One is an old cliff horse of mine, Escobar, who's coming out of Trap 9. Now, the key with Escobar, he's just got a tremendous record at this meeting and at this track. He was third... Um, to Space Blues in the Lennox last year. Don't forget he ran fifth in the, in the in the Lennox earlier in the week, only beaten a couple of lengths when things didn't unfold that great. He was third in this race a couple of years, years ago off a couple of pounds um, lower mark. But he is just in form and 
he when he was third in this race a few years ago he found all kinds of traffic problems he's around a 16 to 1 chance it's just too big for a horse that loves the track um the draw doesn't really matter to him because he's going to be held on to and played late it's just a bit of a luck show for him and jason watson rides him but interestingly danny tudhope takes the ride on shalia coming out of trap one now there's 25 to 1 available about shalia who's been second on three of his last four starts prominent racer too will go up front whether he's good enough i don't know but at 25 to 1 with plenty of places up for grabs i think shalia could well get the lead could lead them round could outrun his price for sure and maybe hit the frame or better but i take shalia and escobar in the golden mile and just to fix now it is time for the art power chat which i think a lot of you will be tuning in for uh, a race in which batash is obviously going for his fifth win in succession but he does have to put a somewhat labored one in the king stand uh, behind him he is obviously rated eight pounds ahead of art power but uh, i guess still may it rain may it rain may it rain Yes, and you know it's it's a tough race, and but uh, you know we're taking on the, the best sprint in the country, like in uh, you know and Glassy Sleeper and Batash, and Batash is the daddy of the sprinting in the country, you know. But uh, we we'll give him a go, and uh, we drop him back in trip, and my horse hasn't been disappointed myself the last few times, so it's just a competitive race, you know. The drop back in trip looks a kind of an obvious move on his kind of runs this season. Yes, and he, you know, he ran two competitive races. He he ran very well at Ascot and very bottomless ground. And I hope for the rain coming. And he ran a good race and a fast ground at Newmarket, you know. So he proved himself he can go in, in any kind of ground. Obviously, you know, the opposition is very strong. But, uh, you know, I'm sure he will turn up in good form. And one of your better rides of the week? I'd say so. Artie Power should be one of my best rides. And... Uh, you know, he's been consistent the way I'd say, and you know, but uh, it's tough. It's a tough ask, but uh, he got plenty of speed, and I hope Batash and can go hard and I can come and get the money. What price will Batash go off here, Bill, do you think? I think he'll go off, yeah, five to four, 11 or 10. I don't think he'll go off odds on. I think the race is too strong. Mm. Uh, the Dragon Symbol, Art, Power, and Glass slippers, even the French Raider Suezi. There's a lot of strength and depth in here. Um, if at first you don't succeed, try again. I'm going to go with the same tactics I went for in the King Stand because there's a bit of deja vu here in that there is so much pace that there is a danger of there being a bit of a pace me me meltdown. If, if the likes of Batash and Ornate and Glass Slippers and Art power. If they, if, they, if they all get Liberty Beach, if they all get racing too early, it might well shape for a few closers to get involved. Silv doesn't want to hear it, but he's come back in now. Um, <laughs> it might shape for a few closers. But I, I will stick with my tried and tested formula. Get the same prices again. Big price, hopefully, Arecibo in terrific form. Jamie Spencer loves to ride one cold out the back. And at Goodwood, <laughs> he's, he's, he's done that this week already. He hasn't, hasn't worked yet, but it could work on Arecibo. <laughs> Again, for the places, Arecibo each way, sometimes four places. I thought that's worth a go. And then Silv's going to think I'm mad crazy, but old friend, Stone of Destiny, also in the King Bower colours. Um, goes yes. to Goodwood, loves the ferocious pace to sit off and, and pounce on late. And stranger things have happened. I've seen he's priced up at 80 to 1 in one place, 66 to 1 generally. I think that is a monstrous price. He didn't get... Uh, didn't get the fr any share of the spoils and ask it, but I, I would give him a chance here to, to potentially hit the frame. You often get funny ones. I play those two each way in a wide open race. Very interesting. And still, is it possible for horses to go too fast in a five furlong top class group one? Absolutely. Yeah, it's special for, it's very beneficial for the hold up horses, you know, mm. whatever who's right. If they got a little bit of a patient and counter to five, sometimes they pay off. And, yeah, but, uh, yeah. You know, it's Stone of Destiny. He likes to do that off the pace, you know, and uh, he's a master. If the harder they go, the better it's for him. You know, Fasc fascinating, fascinating. So, yes. uh, obviously, he's a, he's a group too, but you have to bear in mind what Bill is saying there that there's so much pace, right? So even over this trip, they might go hard. I'm really interested in uh, the glorious stakes, Alunak, who's uh, a horse who came good last time um, by Camelot. The interesting thing about him still is that as much as he hadn't won in a long time, he did win very well. It was on soft ground. And on ratings here, he must have a reasonable each way chance. Yes, and, you know, he surprised me because I rolled him in the soft ground. He couldn't, he, 
he couldn't find his way home, you know. Mm. And uh, when it was really wet and soft, he just bolted up, you know. Mm. And uh, I was measuring how far to win on him. And uh, he surprised me and as much as he surprised you and the rest, the people. But uh, he's in great shape and he's, you know, basically that day he gave the best ride I ever could ask a horse to mm. give, you know. So... Mm. And He's, Foxtel uh, isn't like a bad runner up for a bad supporting act for the owner. No, definitely not. And uh, but uh, he's there, and you know, if he don't roll up in the same form he was last time, he shouldn't be far away. This this race is intriguing, um, obviously, for the Irish Raider Bill Mogul, who absolutely bombed last time when we saw him um, at, at behind the horse, was obviously pulled out last time, the King George Pile Driver. Um, but he still won five races, and he hadn't been in bad form prior to that this season. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's got a, a, a real wide open feel to it. And the, we, we touched on the ground. Lots will depend on the ground. If it's a soft ground race, then then, then the Yukon Greens come into it. If it's going to dry out and be quick, then Mogul comes into it. Um, I thought this was really hard. If you force me to go with one at this stage, I'd probably take a chance on the horse we don't know too much about. And that's that passion and glory. Yeah. Who has been super impressive in his two runs to date. He was a non-runner, new marker, and the ground was too quick. It doesn't look like it'll be too quick. Um, and I just thought he was interesting. He was really good at Ascot behind Fabulous. Um, when he beat Fabulous last time and was, was impressive when he won at Lingfield the time before that. And he, he, he just looks the, the, a chance to me at around 6-1. to one. I thought he was um, interesting. Or 5-1, to one, I think he's interesting. <laughs> Let's conclude with the nursery then, which is still the last ride of the day. And the Tropez Power obviously was uh, awarded the race last time. Um, you know, I know you were speaking off air still. You were saying that you know you were carried quite a bit. I I tend to think um, the British stewards. I think they are too much on the side of the horse that finished first past the post. Situation like this, if you're beating the neck with a significant interference, I think the horse who was straight should should have been um, you know basically given the nod, which which turned out to be the case here. And in any event, he sticks to the six furlongs in the four forty five. Yes, and we thought that would be a good option for him. And, uh, you know, after after we won the race last time in the insurance room, in the insurance room. but, uh, yeah. And uh, he's a horse, he got a lot of speed and he's learning, you know, he's still learning, but uh, he done well last time. He should have won the race and the other horse keep disappointing him, come across and bring me across. And uh, I thought the insurance give the right decision, you know, at the end of the day. So, but he has to prove himself in this race. And uh, here we are with a chance, I guess. Is, is he a nice looking horse? I was looking him up earlier. He was sold for 125,000 guineas as a yearling, um, despite the fact he's by a relatively yeah. cheap stallion. So he's obviously nice to look at. He is. Uh, he's very scopy and uh, he's very athletic. And, uh, you know, he's... He's a horse, he's a, he's a progress, and he's improving all the time. Yeah. What do you make of it, Bill? Yeah, I thought it was a, a typical trappy kind of Goodwood nursery. I, I, I respect Seal's horse, but he's, he's got his fair share of weight towards the top. I thought a Deb, um, the Richard Fahey horse, who seems... Same to, stallion. Yeah, well, well, he's been gelded too, and seemed a completely different horse. He showed nothing in his first two starts, being gelded, and then looked completely different at Beverly. And he's, you could probably upgrade him for that. He starts life off a mark of 83. And Richard Fahey rarely leaves Goodwood without a winner or two. So I just thought a Deb might be a very interesting runner here. In terms of a uh, two-year-old race like this, still uh, coming to the end of the day when there's probably been, you know, the grounds pull up a bit. What are you looking for here in terms of your draw? What are you looking for in terms of position? Well, like they would say, my horse got his speed and the draw is not the ideal but he got the experience you know is mm. he has three races already and uh like they would say he learned in each race he runs you know we was very disappointed first time out he come back and finished third and a ground probably wasn't suitable and when he hit a better ground we got the race you know but uh it's a competitive nursery and uh i think from that draw he just have to go forward and trying to get in a bit or do the work from, you know, he's only draw 10, like he's not that far away. Yeah, from the road. Uh, absolutely. And Bill, in the, in the final race, another three year old Haggis trains, Wink Van is in the cusp of four timer. Do you like anything in this? And if not, what's your bet of the day? Um, I thought the last race, yeah, Wink, Wink Van I is looks the obvious one. He'll be favorite with Ryan Moore. It's got upset written all over it, though. Mm. 
I couldn't find the winner if, if, if I tried in the last. I think it, it, I like how you're so honest. You don't bluff. It's like I don't know what's going to win this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a, it's a typical <laughs> trophy one. We, everyone will be on Winkle and I. It's, it's just a, it's just a luck thing with him. He, he's he's progressive, but I wouldn't be in a hurry to to take him on. Um, I thought, as in terms of my best bet of the day, um, I I like Smart Champion each way at twelves. So in the first, I think I think that's. Um, that price would be under pressure, and I also thought, funny enough, that if you could get eighty to one four places, Stony Destiny, you might have a bit of an exciting cheer late on. Yeah, I, I, I think you've made great cases for both of those horses. Um, and before we go, still, is it all about the power? Is it all about the art? Is it all about soft ground beating Batash uh, on the penultimate day of Goodwood? Yes, and you know, and like I said, I think my best ride is Arty Power, so I stick with him. Lads, thanks a million for your time. Brilliant. Thank you, Johnny. Thank you. And oh, yeah, yeah, and we'll, we'll wish still all the best on, on the Friday uh, of Glorious Goodwin and Bill indeed as well. Do remember if you're pipped uh, by a neck or less, uh, pipped at the post, Star Sports will return your stake to a pony. And I have been told by Luke to go over and say hello to the lads and they will look after you again. Not really sure what that means, but it is glorious to be racing again and enjoy the day.